1.3 is about the quadratic formula completing the square and the discriminant. Stuff you guys have seen a million times, okay? The quadratic formula is not terribly difficult. It's just you got to be organized. You got to watch your signs, that sort of thing. Here is the quadratic formula. Most of you know a song that goes along with it. You know, if you YouTube, there's a million different songs to help you remember, but it's negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Where do we get the A, the B, and the C from? Mm -hmm. When, at, good, when the equation is in standard form, the coefficient of X squared is your A, the coefficient of X is your B, and the constant is C. Do you guys notice how it goes X squared, X constant equals zero? Everything is on one side of the equation. So what you need to make sure that you do especially on your quiz. I made the quizzes already. You have to make sure everything is on the same side of the equation first. On the quiz, I'll tell you, solve by factoring. Solve by using the quadratic formula, something like that, so you guys will know exactly what. To this is how the quadratic formula came to be. If any of you care to look at this, you're welcome to. I'm not going to go through it. But if I tell you to solve the equation using the quadratic formula, you have to make sure everything is on the one side of the equation. If you had something, if you had like 3x squared minus 5x equals 1, you got to move the 1 over. Don't just make c is 1 because c is not 1. c is negative 1. So make sure everything is on one side and then identify what you have. What is my a term in this equation? 3. Okay. So I would write down a equals 3. b is what? negative 5 and c is what negative 1 does everyone see where I got those numbers from yes okay so now if we're gonna do the quadratic formula I'm gonna write it real quick x equals negative b plus or minus square roots of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a now we just fill everything in take your time some of you are gonna say do I have to write negative negative 5 because that's just positive 5 no you don't have to I'm going to just so I don't make a mistake. So I have negative, negative 5, plus or minus the square root of, what do I write? What's my B? So I'm going to write negative 5 squared, put it in parentheses, minus 4 times A is what? 3 times C is what? Negative 1. And that's all over 2 times A, which is 3. Did I fill everything in correctly? Make sure. This is a very important step. You guys need to make sure you filled in everything correctly and then you can move on. So if we simplify, negative negative 5 is just 5 plus or minus. Let's simplify into the radical. What is negative 5 squared? 25, good. Then I have negative 4 times 3 times negative 1. What's negative 4 times 3? Negative 12 times negative 1? Positive. Good. So plus 12. Over 2 times 3, which is 6. Anybody have any questions? We good? Okay, let's simplify a little more. I have 5 plus or minus. What is 25 plus 12? 37. Okay. Over 6. Can I break down square root of 37? No. no. Is there a perfect square and a non-perfect square inside of 37? Yes. No. no. <clears throat> so can I simplify this anymore? No. no. Can I simplify anything here between 5 and 6? No. 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 So my answer is 5 plus or minus the square root of 37 over 6. You can leave it just like that. If you can simplify, you have to. But in this case, we don't have to. We can't. Is this a real solution or an imaginary one? It's real. It's real. Why is it, why is it not imaginary? Because they're real numbers. They're all real numbers. How would I have an imaginary solution? I. I. If we took the square root of a negative number. Good. All right. With that, we'll probably have some of those. All right. Quadratic formula. Identify first your A, B, and C. What's A? Four. Okay. A equals 4. B is what? Four. And C is? 
Okay, good. So I have x equals negative b plus or minus the square roots of b squared. Let's write that correctly. b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. What's my b? So I have negative 12 plus or minus... 12 squared minus 4 times what's A? Uh, four. 4. What's C? Nine. All right. All over 2 times 4. You guys with me? Yeah. Okay. So I have negative 12 plus or minus. Let's simplify under the ether radical. What's 12 squared? 144. 144. All right. What is negative 4 times 4? Negative 16 times 9. Let's do 16 times 9. 9 times 6 is 54. It's 144. <laughs> Thank you, Siri. So I have minus 144 all over 2 times 4 is 8. Yes? Okay. So we have negative 12 plus or minus. What's 144 minus 144? Zero. zero. So square root of zero over 8. What's the square root of 0? What's the square root of 0? What's the square root of 0? 0. So do I need to write this? No, I just have negative 12 over 8. Can I simplify that? What goes into 12 and 8? 4. So I have negative what? 3 over 2. 3 over 2. Good. How many solutions do I have there? One. How many did I have in the other problem? Two. two. How did I have two? Because it was plus or minus. Good. This is just one solution. Is it real or is it imaginary? It's real. There's no eyes. Good. All right. <clears throat> Quadratic formula. Again, A is what? One. B is two. And C is two. Everything's on one side, right? I don't have to move anything. We're good to go. So I have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Yes? Yeah? Okay, so I have negative 2 plus or minus what? 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2 all over 2 times 1. Okay. So negative 2 plus or minus, what's 2 squared? 4. What's negative 4 times 1? Times 2. Negative 8 all over 2. So simplify. Negative 2 plus or minus, what's 4 minus 8? Negative 4 over 2. What do you guys notice about this answer? It's negative underneath where? The root. The root. It's going to be imaginary. Very good. When you take out a negative underneath the square root, what does this become? I. I. What's the square root of 4? So this is really 2i. Very good. So I have negative 2 plus or minus 2i over 2. Can I cancel anything out? Yes. yes. Guys, look. Rewrite this if you need to as two separate fractions so you can see. In the first fraction, negative two over two, what does that simplify to? Negative one. What's two i divided by two? Just i. And there's my answer. Hmm? You can. You can put one in front of it. No. So we just had three different types of solutions. The first one, we had two real solutions. Then the second one, we had one solution. And now we have two solutions. But what kind are they? They're what? Imaginary. Imaginary. Good. Good, 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 good. All right. We okay? All right. You guys have talked about this. This is easy. It's hard to remember, but it's easy to figure out. The discriminant. The discriminant will tell you what kind of solutions you have and how many. Okay, there's going to be a question on your quiz that says, tell me the value of the discriminant. You're going to figure out what it is, and then you're going to tell me what it tells you about the solutions. 
The discriminant is this. It's what's underneath the radical. If you have a discriminant that is greater than zero, that means a positive number, okay? So then write this down. This means a positive number. You'll have two real solutions. If you have a discriminant, if underneath the radical equals zero, you have one solution. And if the discriminant is negative, negative number, you'll have no real solution, or you could say two imaginary, right? We had three different scenarios that we just did, and all three of these things came up. The first one, the number underneath the radical was 37. It was two real solutions. The second one, the number underneath the radical was zero. That's why we had one solution. And then in the last one, the number underneath the radical was negative four. You guys remember that? So this is kind of like going backwards. You're gonna have a question two on your quiz that says, Use the discriminant to determine how many solutions. So what you're going to do is you're going to do the discriminant, which is just the piece underneath the radical. It's not the radical itself. It's just the b squared minus 4ac. So you're going to tell me the value of the discriminant. What is the number when you evaluate? And then you're going to tell me what kind of solutions you have. So what is b in this case? Four. Four, four squared. A is one. B is four. What's c? What kind of one? Negative one. So four squared minus four times one times negative one. What's four squared? 16. What's negative four times one times negative one? So it's plus four. What is the value of the discriminant? What, what's the number though? What is 16 plus four? 20. So the value of the discriminant is 20. What does that tell me about my solutions? Is it too real? One or two imaginary? Two, two. So you would tell me the discriminant value is 20 and it has two real solutions. Does that make sense? Why would it be two real Because this is a positive number. You can take the square root of 20. What were the other ones? If it's zero, you have one solution. And if it's negative, then it would be two imaginary. Because remember, this is what's underneath the radical. Can you take the square root of 20? Yeah. Let's try this one. <clears throat> What's A? Four, four. four. What's B? Negative 12. Negative 12. Good. And what's C? No. Okay. So our discriminant is B squared minus 4AC. So I have negative 12 squared minus 4 times 4 times 9. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's negative 12 squared? 144. 144. Alexa, what's 4 times 4 times 9? Siri, somebody. Uh, it's 144. It's zero. So I have zero. So if my discriminant value is zero, what does that mean, Evan? Perfect. One real solution. Good. You'll understand it on Thursday. You will, Evan. I believe in you. Okay, guys, use the discriminant. There's a fraction, therefore what? We freak out? Yeah, no. We throw a pencil down and say, forget it? Basically, okay, no, we're not going to do that. What's my A term? One third. What's my B term? Negative two. And what's my C? Four. So B squared minus four AC. What's my B? Okay, so negative two squared minus four times A is? And C is, okay. You guys can, you should already be able to see something here, but what's negative two squared? Four. Minus, well, what's four times one third? Four over three, so you have four over three times four over one is what? 16 over three. So this is four over one, right? <clears throat> if I change, huh? Yeah, if I, well, if I change four over one into thirds, if I change this to three, what do I multiply the bottom by? Three. So then what do I do to the top? So this is 12. Good. So what's 12 minus 16? It's negative four over three. That's the value of my discriminant. So what does that tell you about your solutions? 
There's two imaginary. Good. What would happen if you turn to 60 or you into force? You can't turn into force. Well, a common denominator between one and three wouldn't be four. 16 divided by four. 16 divided by four would be four, not three. If I asked you how many real solutions there are here, what would you tell me? No real solutions. Good. Good. Not bad, not bad. All right, let's look at a word problem. <clears throat> I'm only going to do one of these. We'll do a couple more later on in the week. But it says a rectangular building. It's eight feet longer than it is wide and has an area of 2,900 or 3,900 feet squared. Find the dimensions of the lot. Okay, first of all, we have words. Let's draw a picture. What picture should I draw? A rectangle. Good. All right, and they told me the area. How, what's the area formula? Uh, a equals. A equals. Mm -hmm. Length mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. width. Okay. Wow. Okay. So what do we know about the length and the width? The length is how long and the width is how thick. Okay, that's good. That's good. What did they tell us in the problem? It's eight feet longer than. Do we know how long the width is? No. no. So I'm just going to call it X. I don't know how long it is. Do I know? I'm sorry. I don't know how wide it is. Do I know how long the side is? No. 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 But X plus eight. How did you get that? Because it's eight feet longer than Good. It's X plus eight. Very good. So how would I go about solving this? No, we don't need a hypotenuse. <laughs> what do I do with that? Um, You're right. Okay, I'm going to say 2,900. What is that? That's the square. That's the area, right? Okay. What is the length and what is the width? X, X and eight. X plus 8, right? Do you guys agree with me that length times width, you would just multiply? Yeah. So if I distribute this, I have x squared plus 8x equals 2,900. Do you see how we set that up? Yes? Now, if I was going to solve this, what would I have to do with the 2,900? Why? Good. You want everything on one side. Very good. Because I have x squared and an x. So x squared plus 8x minus 2900 equals 0. What's the first thing you would try to do to solve this problem? I know 2900 is a big number. Don't worry about it right now. I'm just We're going to just talk through this. The first thing you should try and do, don't just jump to do the quadratic formula. What should you try and do first? Solve it, factoring. Solve it by what? By factoring. I would first try to see what number times, what times what gives me 2,900, but adds give me 8. We're not going to do this right now. But if you can't factor it, because some of these aren't factorable, then what formula do you use? Quadratic. The quadratic. Okay, so if you, you guys should be able to set these word problems up. We're not going to do a million of them. I'll do more of these during the week, but you should be able to kind of think about it. You're going to have a quadratic. Look at this. A jet flew from New York to Los Angeles, a distance of 4,200 kilometers. The speed for the return trip was 100 kilometers faster than the outbound speed. It took 13 hours. I, most of you, when you get to these, you're just like, oh, forget it. I don't know. All right. We're going to work through word problems. God bless you. <laughs> we're going to work through word problems for the whole year. Because in college, guys, you're going you're gonna to have a college algebra class. That's not easy. They're going to give you a lot of word problems. God bless you. You're probably going to do this on the computer to where you can't ask your teacher questions or, you know, you're going to have to Google everything. So just make sure that you don't just give up because you see words. It's super important that you don't just give up. An object is thrown or fired straight upward. Think about that. Just think about if you take a ball and you throw it straight up. 
Visualize yourself throwing a ball straight up in the air. All right, when does it reach the highest point that it goes? Once it reaches the highest point, what does it do? It comes back down. So they give you a formula right here, and then they want you to manipulate it. Again, we'll talk about this more. Do not get caught up in this. What I want you guys to focus on right now is the quadratic formula and the discriminant. Make sense? 